Now we talk about gear ratios on the D-Series for now and specifically on the confusion regarding close gear ratios which is always decided by their friend's friend on Facebook without any logical sources or understanding or even math. We will talk about the gear spread in relation to the dyno curve on power and since Adobe has retired their flash player, the calculators online no longer shows graph. So we will try to do one better for you guys we'll even talk about trap speed and horsepower and how it reflects on your trap speed and also talk about a grudge race that happened in 2017 that had a twenty-five thousand dollar bet between two cars one had a close gear ratio and the other a standard type r 44 so did the close gear help Now let's jump right away to the subject matter. This is my dyno sheet of my old engine. I lined up the graph so it's more visible, the horsepower and torque. And as we all know, the calculator for the gear ratio, it's Zeal AutoWorks. And we're gonna show you how we check and what's needed to check. And even M Factory has its own calculator. So let's go. All right, now let's head to zealautoworks.com and then we click on the transmission and then we go for the D series. All right, because the Flash Pro or whatever it's called for in Adobe is no longer working, so there's no graph. But let's go with the 19555 on the tires just to be more accurate and consistent, you know. Okay, 55 series. And then, you know, let's pretend it's a fully built D series that it drives all the way to 8,000. It's important because it will reflect the miles per hour on the gears. All right, now let's choose EX because that reflects our PH12 and VTI fifth gear. All right, there you go. All right, so. You gotta remember this, 105.05 miles per hour, all right? Now let's go further into the PH12 gears, all right? First gear is 3.25, the second gear is 1.9, third gear is 1.25, and the fourth is 0 0.90. So, you know, it'll, it'll never happen, but if you finish the quarter mile in 8,000 RPM in fourth gear, you'll be popping 144.4 miles per hour. And if you finish the third gear at 8,000 RPM, it'll be 105 miles per hour. Regardless if the third gear is converted to the fourth gear, it's still 1.25 ratio. So when you think about it, if you need a closer gear ratio, like let's say 1.3 or 1.5, you moved it closer to the 1.9, which is second gear, right? So you're getting the closer ratio to the slower gear, not the faster gear, which is fourth gear. Gear. So when you think about it, it's confusing to some, but it takes a fine balance to get the proper gear spread. And most of the time, the OEM is near perfect because, for example, our single overhead cap has a longer ratio than a B-series, right? But we have more stroke and more torque, so it should work if the engine can handle it. And based on experience, with this kind of gear spread, if you launch it properly and grip well, you would finish the quarter mile with fourth gear, but just for a few seconds or one or two seconds. When you finish third gear, you're near the finish line. So once you pop in the fourth gear, it gets an another push before the finish line. And we'll talk about that on this dyno sheet. On some calculator, like the M Factory one, they show the shift point, you know, like 4754. Now let's go on to the dyno sheet. Before we go on, I hope this gives better and more awareness to most that the dyno sheet isn't just to showcase horsepower or just torque. The whole graph 
the curve speaks volumes and so hopefully you guys can sense or see that a lot of posters do this unfortunately the social media racers find it good enough and are amazed at knowing that they barely got anything now here's my old ESI it's 148 wheel horsepower and 117 torque shifted at 8000 rpm so here it is all right now there that's where you shift or where we shift at 8000 rpm and if you remember this it says 4700 so that's where the second gear starts all the way to red line and then it's 54 on the third gear so it's 54 here all the way to red line now pay attention to torque because as they say horsepower is how hard you hit the wall torque is how far you push it meaning torque is what accelerates you down the line and here is the rpm pickup point on fourth gear and you remember earlier i said if you launch really good you finish up third gear and peep on fourth and around six six or six seven is where you hit where you cross the finish line look look at all the torque that you're using there i mean granted it's fourth gear but when you think about it that much torque and flat curve actually lunges the car forward before the finish line and i didn't know this before but it, this could have possibly what made it run 14.2 in a four door and here we try to show you guys so you can visualize it better here's the power curve as as, as it passes through the power third gear you can see it's using up all the possible power or torque that the engine has even in the fourth gear you know let's go back again second gear right and then third gear and so this is why a power band or the power band is really really important to study you know we're not looking at the just the dyno numbers you know you need to understand the curve this is why onlookers before on my engine they often would say my d15 b7 has good top end not realizing it's just got good mid-range and that's where i concentrated on and you know when they say i have good top end i just nod my head because i try to keep it a secret because i was a street racer back then you know so you gotta keep some advantages right so if you concentrate on more top end look it may not go even faster or just a little faster than before because it's wasting all those power when you're not even there in that gear you know granted this on ph12 gears okay see why i just nod my head when they said i have good top end right it's something to sway them off but of course when you have a close gear ratio it's a different approach but you still study your dyno sheets you know now let's go to close gear ratio now back to the calculator from zeal autoworks all right so m factory is 1.565 ratio and because it requires your third gear to be inverted to run as fourth gear your fourth gear is 1.25 so you remember when i said remember the 105.05 that's your top end on fourth gear because that's simply your third gear so that's why it's a must to run fifth gear from m factory so that it's all close gear ratio but then it doesn't let you drive on the highway right only a few did this properly there's one in the south you know and you guys remember this it shows you the rpm pickup points like third gear is six seven then six five so let's do that so the third gear picks up at 6.7 all the way to the red line. And then fourth gear, because it was your third gear before, it's 6.5. So now let's do the animation. Remember this is the second gear. It uses up all the good power. And look at third gear. Look where your torque is. It's already going down, right? This is why when people go with a close gear ratio, suddenly they feel like they need the car to be lighter. When you think about it, that's like solving a problem that does not exist. Like I said, I've seen one from the South that does it properly and actually runs really good with such a simple setup. However, we see shops that build a sock with pistons and cams and they could barely run 14.8. That's my stock. 
Now on to the grudge race way back in 2017. It's between two cars or two groups that did really really well. One of them crossed the finish line in 5th gear while the other crossed it halfway through 4th gear. So we know that one ran a type R44, right? And here are the race rules. Look. Those are fair rules. 84 bore, stock 89 stroke, no lightning, same slicks, all motor, and same fuel. And they both ran 11s. That's crazy, right? In 2017. And one thing you must know, it's humanly possible to only shift as fast as 0.13 of a second or 0.12 but you know let's take it easy on the rider or the driver so let's say 0.15 right but then that also means the added shift point is actually slowing you down right look at this this is the time slip of that race look the winning car is 11.8 and the losing car is 11.851. So imagine, remember we talked about the shift points, right? So imagine, even if it's humanly fastest at 0.12 or 0.13, that, that, that would have won, right? I'm not saying uh, with a non-close ratio gear, it would have won better, but we know the extra shift point didn't make it go faster in the quarter mile right so you gotta factor that in so the gear spread is also equally important than just close ratio even bc moto his d series ran factory zac gear set he had jamie houseman of houseman gearboxes do the final drive that was way before m factory so that cost him around two thousand four hundred dollars this is why when he went f series he had to retain the transmission because it was so expensive and he ran 5-1 final drive on his d series that is why he also ran 26 inches slicks you know because it can pull it and I hope this is helping you guys visualize and understand the close gear ratios and whatnot. Because when you think about it, it's like every other aftermarket parts, you know. It's not, not because you got it, you're going to go fast. It has to be taken into account on everything else. Depending on how this video progresses, we might do a B series and even a K series for you guys. So you know, you gotta like and subscribe.